Hey everyone, welcome back to the Europe Games YouTube channel. My name is Ralph. This is the Banner Saga. We just um, were in Frostfeller with Rook and Alette and Odliff and Ivor. And now we have returned to the other party where um, Mogor and Hakon are having a conversation. Hakon, we're back. I was able to get about as many warriors from Strand as you wanted, and more weapons. Extra supplies, too. You perk up, just now realizing Mogur has been talking to you. Since Faulkner died, everyone has been looking to you to make the decisions. It's uh, exhausting. Akon? Oh, he's the boss now. I heard you. I was saying the Varl we sent to Strand have returned. The governor gave us most of what we wanted. Good enough. Much resistance from the governor? Some. I don't think he was happy about us buying his fighters using his own money. <laughs> he also insisted we take on a lackey of his to watch over his uh, property. A man named Eric. Oh. Eric, I met him. He seemed competent enough. Regardless, the governor will have to get over it, unless he wants Dredge crawling through his streets. We've put down every slag that has wandered through here while we, you were gone. Oh, Joffrey is still here. Enough flapping of mouths then. You're, you're sure that wound has healed, Joffrey? I agree. Enough has already gone wrong. If something happens to the prince on a mission of peace, the alliance would rot. Or worse. Luden makes his own decisions. Yeah. Yeah, Luden. We would only be made to do this again later. And I will not suffer at all a second time. Either take us through the wandering roads or do your job and slaughter some dredge. Luden turns abruptly with a scowl. He stamps back to his ring of tents and followers. Wandering roads not an option with this many. I could crush that boy's skull with one hand. If Luden won't be deterred, you'll have to deal with it. Don't let Luden get to you. Let's go. I'm sick of looking at this dump. What do I tell the warriors, Hakon? Tell them we cover the mountainside and dredge bodies. Yeah, then that's a, a leader. Good. Give the word, we'll set off. Uh, let's see, we can speak to... Uh, I don't recognize the portraits yet. Uh, this is Hakon, at least. I'd ask you how you're dealing with Faulkner's death, but I already know the answer. Oh, Mogur. Yeah. Do you? Steady old Mogur, which is good. I know most of these Varl, but they're not under my command. They came to follow Fognir. Tell you the truth, I wouldn't want to be in your position either. Anything you can tell me about the caravan? Throw together this many Varl, half of them want to hit each other, the rest want to be left alone. Anyone I should keep an eye on? There's a couple of clan leaders trying to show off for each other. Not a big deal, I've got it under control. The fighters we just got from Strand aren't bad. But they're unruly. Give it a few days. And there are a few moaning about fighting for you instead of Fognir. Those are the ones to worry about. What about Luden's men? They don't want to hear anything from me. I know that. Any problems? Could be. Luden's pet Farl is named Bercy. Not sure where he came from or what his deal is. Bastard knows how to fight, but there's something I don't like about him. His girl in red is scary too, Ersa. She's probably the best fighter Luden's got, to be honest. I've overheard some of the Varl call her the Witch. Ooh. Why? The flaming arrows, I think. It's a good trick, but the fire upsets our Varl more than the Dredge. Still doesn't make much sense, Witch. They're not scholars, Hakon. I think they're mostly just afraid of her. Ah, that makes more sense. Don't let her find out. <laughs> what do you ask? You think we're walking into a death trap? This many Varl? Nah, we should be alright. Things could get rough though. 
I don't like to be the one to send Farrell to their deaths. I don't like worrying about myself and that's about the extent of it. I would have expected Wagner to drop like that on a couple of slack. Still wondering what happened. He had hundreds of dead slags to his name. I don't get it. It just happens sometimes. No big moment. I'm sure it surprised him even more than us. Although I have to wonder. Oh, never mind. Anyway, I'll worry about the warriors. You worry about not doing something stupid. <laughs> That's asking a lot. <laughs> I like this Hakon dude. What were you holding back about Fognir? I'd rather not say Hakon. Why not? It's the kind of thing that gets stuck in your head and you need a clear one. It's better if you let me worry about it. I want to know. Sounds important. Tell me. How did Fognir die? He ran into Dredge. Wasn't expecting it. When we found him, he was lying face down like he was struck from behind. Did he really get taken down by some random slag? Who else was there? You think Luden? He probably didn't, but... Damn it. Should keep an eye on that bastard. If you see anything else, tell me. I will. Let me know if you need anything else. I will. Oh man, if Fognir died because of Ludin, whew, there's gonna be trouble. Let's talk to uh, Ubin here. You knew him well, didn't you? Fognir? No. Ah, uh, well, I don't know. I remember him. Always rushing around with some important business, but I never knew him. Never got a chance to talk much. Longer than I did, in any case. I suppose so. When he spoke, Farrell listened. I knew that. I could use some help there. The Scrivener leans back, considering the sentiment. I've seen worse. They respect you for your ability to swing an axe. They need to respect you for your actions. But you're not talking to the right Farrell. Mogur's got some skill there. Most I can do is hold a quill. What are you always putting down in that journal? What do you mean? What do I write? I write what happens. We've got a banner in Arborang for that, you know. You know the long banner? Yeah, the, the Menders wove up something that writes its own history. You want my opinion? I don't trust it. No? It tells a broad story. I think there's some value in the narrow. Whose story does it write? Mine? Theirs? Ludens? Gods forbid. Ha! <laughs> you relic. The gods have been dead a long time. Oh, have they? Old habits, I, I suppose. I heard you were a terror in your day. <laughs> Do you know how old I am? Dare I ask? I'm competing, you know. Nobody knows how old we Varl can get, naturally. There's one by the name of Snorri. He's got a few years on me, just hunkers in Grofheim collecting rhyme. Bastard might actually beat me. And another one named Krumer is close, I think, but the adult son of a bitch still welcomes a fight. He'll probably be off before I am, although... The Scrivener gestures around him as if to remind you of the current situation. You chuckle. Anyway, point is, what difference does it make? I'm just a delivery burn for a urinder now. Can't remember half what I've done. Hence the journal. <laughs> Hence, don't get fancy on my behalf, Hakon. Okay, I won't. So what do you suppose happened to the sun? Gods, how should I know? Never been something like, never seen something like this before. Are you worried? Some of the Varl in the caravan thinks the world's coming to an end. Others think it's the best thing that could happen. No more black months. I'll take it. If it's the end, I'm ready. What about the rest of us? To the depths with you. <laughs> uh, get some rest. Always more marching to do. I've hoofed more hills than a horse born with a grudge. Don't worry about me. Okay. So, uh, we have the map, we have the he the heroes. Ah yes, we can uh, level up Gunulf. 
uh, but he's still injured for two days and he needs to rest and camp to heal so that's two days to get Gunolf back uh, let's let me quickly check what this does uh, leave can we rest actually no I haven't looked at the map in a while so let's uh, quickly look at a few areas here so Harab Haran the long snow fields, tall mountains and sparse woods of Haran used to be the gathering place of dredge during the second great war as Farl pushed them ever northward they took the land and settled it themselves, preferring the cold expanses over the warm, busier lands of men to the south. Now the territory is almost entirely varl. Okay. Oh, that's uh, that's actually a, a nice big territory here. Um, weather fell, named bad weather. The gales that blow in from the bay and around the mountain peaks keep weather fell in a generally unpleasant state. What really cemented the name was the kind of person who would live there, men cast out from Strand for one reason or another, with nowhere else to go. So are we currently at last gate? Yes. The crossing of the small bridge leading from Vetterfell onto the Wandering Road marked a small but significant moment in which the Varl truly separated itself from humanity in search of their own lands. And the wandering road is what we're what we're going to be um, walking on, I guess, until um, this region there. At the end of the first great war, the Varl had more to contend with than mankind to the south. Above the Bradabrak peaks, the lands crawled with furious war-minded dredge. The first Varl king, Einar let the entire fall race across the snowy fields of the wandering road sweeping away dredge as they went before forming the first feral kingdom of Einartoft. okay that's um, a quick look at our map for now i think we are ready to leave let's see what happens Look at that, says Mogur. In the hills, more dredge. No more than a dozen, though. We could just as easily pass by as rush up there to slaughter them. Luden overhears. That's a dozen dredge heading towards Strand, he says. You ask him when he started to care about Strand. I don't. I thought you did. Mogur, send some warriors to take care of it. Let's see, we have 185 fighters. Will do, he says. Hopefully they'll be able to catch back up to the caravan. He rushes off to find some volunteers. Luden and his men are not asked. You return to travel. Minus 10 Farl, okay. Hakon. You can hear Luden's hard-booted trot as you set up camp the first day and brace yourself. Can we speak? As equals? <laughs> Are we equal now, Joffrey? We can try. It seems clear to me you plan to kill a lot of dredge along the way, am I right? Why do you ask? Because since we left Arborang the Varl, I've been acting like I need protection. Don't assume only the Varl can fight, do you understand me? That is my banner we fly to Grofheim, the banner of Arborang. I insist on joining in battle. Almost got it in your first encounter and ready for more? Whatever you like, Prince. And um, I expected more resistance. <laughs> From Fognir, maybe. You tell me you were his Kender. That's why you're in charge now. Some sort of next of kin, foral thing? Don't you take on his responsibilities? That doesn't mean I care what happens to you. Oof. In my own way, yes. Then stop acting like I'm a thorn in your side. When you're nearly 200 years, it's hard to take a 20 year old man, is that right? Seriously. You better start. We'll both be kings someday. 
That's the last thing I need to think about right now. Luton looks at you as though you just punched yourself in the face. He heads back to his tent before saying whatever was on his mind. On exertion. You've gotten some characters with high exertion. Don't overlook this important stat. Exertion lets you add more willpower to your actions. Want to add more than one star to your attack? Upgrading to 3 exertion lets you add 3 damage to every attack or move 3 spaces further than usual. If you've got the willpower for it. Right, this also works with movement. Oh, right. Okay, that's gonna be very interesting for Rook then, I think. Remember, each stat is equally important in combat. Choose wisely. Alright. So if I look at the hero tent, is... No, he's still at two days. We have a... Oh, we have a bunch of new characters in here. Okay, let's, let's quickly check out the characters. So we have Ersa, is a rank 1 siege archer. Not many people know much about where Ursa came from, but ever since Luden became old enough to train, Ursa has been close by. Rumors used to spread about a romantic relationship between the two until Ursa found out about them and then suddenly they stopped. Those who have spent much time near her have described the woman as intimidating. Alright, that's cool. She has a slag and burn. The character throws a five tile area of slag onto the ground, which explodes immediately. Targeted tile takes the damage seen below. So that's two uh, strength damage. Uh, adjacent units take two strength damage. It also leaves randomly placed burning coals on unoccupied tiles. If targeting an empty tile, coals always uh, appear on the center tile first. Walking over the burning coals causes one strength damage. Okay, that could be interesting. And then the passive ability is puncture. By standing still, the archer is able to line up a shot that takes advantage of an enemy's missing armor doing bonus damage. For every two points of armor her target has lost, the archer gains uh, one additional strength to her attack, as long as she didn't move beforehand. This makes her especially deadly near the end of a fight or against tough opponents who have lost a lot of armor. Just remember not to move, giving the archer time to line up her shots. Okay. So there is a lot of uh, willpower here. And then we have a, uh, a Warhawk. Is this like a War Master? Who is a Warhawk? Oh, Gunulf is a Warhawk. Okay. So we have Bercy the Warhawk. Of all of Luden's traveling companions, Bercy is the most likely to stand out, being a literal giant amongst men. Even Luden seems afraid of him, which may be the primary reason he hasn't been sent away. On the rare occasion it has been whispered that the Varl doesn't even work for the prince, but some other group altogether. What is well known is that he's already saved Luden's life on more than one occasion. Does he have the same? Uh, yes, okay, so he has Tempest and Heavy Impact. Okay, so that is the same... Uh, the same as... Gunulf, yes. Alright. Eric is the guy who gets stuff done for the governor of Strand, though for a man with a heavy responsibility he seems to have an awful lot of freedom in his methods. Plenty of warring clans within Strand have tried to take him down, none have, su have succeeded. Eventually he earned himself the nickname the Iron Turtle. Ooh. Uh, let's see, active ability is Rally. The character is an expert of city warfare, darting in and out to be useful where he's needed. While he doesn't use a bow like the hunter, Rally allows him to grant willpower to allies from anywhere in battle. 
when they'll need it the most, making him an invaluable support character. And in a light step, the character uses his superior dexterity to move around bodies, allowing him to pass through and not stop on any allies. Light step can help a crafty character get safely into position behind armored allies before going in for the strike or escape from a dangerous position. Okay, that is somewhat interesting. I mean, it's cool to give uh, willpower back. Uh, Luden had Impale, yes. Moger, we have seen him battle already, I think, right? Bring the Pain, yes. And Gunulf can be promoted again, okay. How about we do that? Let's uh, promote Gunulf to a rank 3. Uh, what do we need here? I want him to be super strong, of course. Um, however, I think I might want to... Like, he has 16. I, I really want to max out his strength. However... Like armor break and having this additional. Is that interesting? Or should I do it like this? Make him even stronger. Yeah, let's do it like this. Uh, for now, the willpower. Yeah, he only has three willpower. That's not a lot. Let's do it like this. Let's uh, speak to Bercy. You have a moment? As you approach Bercy, he lowers the book he was reading. He doesn't strike you as the book reading type. You're Bercy. <laughs> You're Hakon. We've gotten that out of the way, haven't we? <laughs> I have some questions. Say what you want to say. What's Varl doing working for Luden? What's Varl doing working for another Varl? What difference does it make? Looks like you're in charge right now, so do me a favor and don't get Luden killed. He's important to you? No, but that's one way to put it. Where did you learn to fight? Same way as you, by fighting. You know what I mean. I robbed well-protected merchants for at least one man's lifetime. Is that what you mean? Yeah, not anymore. I've had lots of jobs. Can I trust you? What a loaded question, it depends on what you mean. Whose back will you have if things go wrong? Assume I'm looking out for myself and you'll figure it out. Does Luden understand that? Luden doesn't even understand that half his army is here just to protect him from the people he talks to. <laughs> yes, that is so accurate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you laugh at the unexpected gouge. Bercy grins, pleased with himself. What do you want to know? Let's uh, not keep him any longer. I'm where I want to be. Don't forget what I said about keeping Luden alive. Got it? As you step away, you can't help but wonder if there was a bit of a threat behind that gravelly request. Ooh. And we have uh, Ersa here, which we, we can uh, have, a, have, a, have a small conversation with, see if I'm also afraid, if Hakan is afraid of Ersa. She watches you approach with her head tilted back and points a thumb towards Luden's tent. No, I'm here for you. Oh. Can we talk? Ersa shakes her head no, smile on her lips, eyelid low. Why not? I don't. In those two curiously contradictory words, you get the impression she has a beautiful obsidian voice and this might be a complete waste of time. She watches you expectantly. You're Luden's bodyguard? No, he's mine. Before you have the chance to be confused, she cackles, abrupt and loud, and she looks slightly embarrassed. <laughs> Something like that, probably. <laughs> You are his personal guard, though. 
Her expression changes to, of course. How did you end up with someone like Luden? Just luck. But the flaming arrows. Varl and Fire don't get along. All you get is a shrug. If you are going to use them, she pulls an arrow, and there is a flick of the wrist you don't quite catch. Suddenly a bird combusts in the tree behind you and falls to the ground smoldering. Half the camp has turned to watch. Don't tell me not to. So you don't talk? No. You do, though. I don't. <laughs> she smiles warmly, clearly enjoying her game. Yep, this has been fun. She crosses her arms, a hand on her chin, cocks her head to one side. Till next time, Ursa. Hakon. You stop and look over your shoulder. I'm a witch, so be careful. She puts her forefinger to her lips with a soft shh. You depart. Not quite sure what to make of that. Yes. <laughs> oh, we have some great, some great new characters. Uh, what I want to try is a, a training fight here to see what the abilities are of Ursa. Uh, let's see. There is a Varl. Let's put him over here. Let's put him in the middle. Let's let's see. Let's put Luden over here. Let's put Bercy over there. Hakon over there. Or maybe over here. Something like that. Sounds good. Okay, Hakon. Uh, let's turn our usual nice thing on here. Let's move Hakon up here. Uh, what did Sundering Impact do again? Oh, adjacent enemies? Yeah, that's not what we want to do. Let's just do a regular attack for 5 damage. We could go to 7 even. Let's just do 5 for now. Uh, Moger. Let's move Moger over here and let's rest. Can he be attacked? Yes, he can. Okay, that's a pity. Um, Eric. Why don't you stay where you are? For now. Oh, that's a cool move. What is this character? That was a cool move. A bagbiter champion, really. Interesting. Um, okay, so. How much damage is this gonna do? Just one? Let's leave him here for a moment. Let's see what Ursa does now. That is what uh, interests me the most. So the slag and burn thing. Let's do that over there. Holy crap, Luden. Luden's almost dead. Okay, so we can kill this dude. Let's do that. Holy shit, this backbiter is super hard. Damn. We can only do one damage here. Let's do a Sundering Impact on him. <clears throat> I'm 
need to move a bit closer, bring the pain. Yeah, that is really a super hard ability, damn. Um, so, you can give some... Some points back, I guess. Right, so we are gonna need to uh, do some serious damage here. Um, let's move Luden and let's impale this dude. Oh man, this backbiter is uh, super tough. Uh, okay, so slag and burn. Can we do that in this one? No. So let's do that over here. Down goes Luden and, and Ursa. Jesus. <laughs> This still does only one damage, of course, because... Uh, what was his ability again? Bring the pain. Let's, um, let's see, let's see. Let's do three shield damage here. It's another one down. Another one bites the dust. Uh, so I'm still only doing one damage here. Let's do another tree. Man. Yeah, and of course, because my... My... Uh, armor goes down. Uh, my strength goes down. My hit points. I'm unable to... Uh, to do much. Damn, yeah, we got our ass kicked, and not a little bit. Okay, so the, the important thing is that I wanted to see what uh, Ursa could do. So how about we leave? You overhear a conversation while marching alongside the warriors. I'm happy to stomp some slags as much as the next Farrell, but I didn't join up to take orders from Hakon, says one. Apparently he doesn't realize you're with an earshot. Not willing to die for him, either. Yeah, how about I challenge this guy to a fight, that's the Hakon way. Who will you take our orders from? You ask loudly. Fogner is dead. We can decide right now. You raise your fists, he does the same reluctantly. His best shot's not bad, but you've had a lot worse. You grab him by the horns, swing his entire massive frame to the air and plant him into the ground. What's his name? You ask his companions. Gris. Take care of Gris, you reply. You hear them laughing at his misfortune as you wander off. Well, that got me some renown. A small gathering of tents come into view. A group of merchants, from the look of it. You ask what they're doing here. We were camped out at uh, Godstone ahead. One tells you. 
leaving an offering to Dangler, as one does. As expression turns, dredge start appearing out of nowhere. Some of us stayed, though the gods don't be safe, but damned if I know why. We've been dodging them since we left. Uh, let's assure them the way to Strand is clear and see them off. Like I... Do I want some... Do I want to trade something? Let's see at least. Not much, he replies. Anything of value we left at the Godstone. I've never seen this many Varl in one place before. You're off to deal with those dredge? You not. We could part with some supplies if you need them. We'll take them. How much? I'll give them freely. Clearing the road is more than we could ask. I have one request though. My wife's brother stayed at the Godstone. You'll know him by a necklace with many gold rings. If you see him, say we are safely in Strand. You agree. The merchants continue onwards. Oh, that's good. 35 supplies. Nice. The caravan slows unexpectedly. World travels down the line and then to Moger, who tells you Dredge, know we're coming. Probably saw us back at Featherfell and did the usual lurking. Could have been bad if we plotted into them, but we saw them first. Dredge, watch you, waiting to see what you do. When's the last time you command a few hundred, Hakon? Don't overthink it. The warriors can take care of themselves. Okay, now we get to war. Alright, when you come across more enemies than your party can handle, you'll engage in war. Give your army orders to fit the situation, but be prepared to get your own hands dirty too. By making battle easier for yourself, you'll end up with higher casualties. Or you can take the burden on yourself with a harder battle, but save more lives. If you're ever desperately outnumbered, it may be best to run, avoiding battle completely. Oh man. Dredge line the battlefield, weapons drawn, a fight seems inevitable. You take a quick head count. There must be at least 487 of them. You have 185 fighters and 400 and uh, 56 Varl at your side. Holy shit. Even from here you can see nervous glances amidst the enemy ranks. This looks like a good chance to press your advantage. Formations! You start comparing weaknesses and strengths, taking into account terrain, morale and the look of your enemy. If you're careful, you should be able to keep your forces balanced. Okay, let's give the order. You start rallying your forces and gather your allies to you, preparing to enter the fray. Oh. Okay, so that's how that works. <laughs> uh, let's put it like this, probably. Maybe Ursa. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so formations means we're doing, we're uh, doing it uh, with the party, I guess. Oh shit! Oh man, that's way too many. Uh, Eric can be over there. He's not gonna do a lot. Man. Let's, um... Pa. Yeah, let's let's put loot in there. We'll we'll see how that goes. Damn, that is a lot. Let's see, the Sundering Impact. Splash damage is one strength damage. Yeah, there is no adjacent enemies yet, so let's just walk over here. 
And let's do six damage. That is something at least. Holy shit, that is a big dude and he he took down Mogur almost in one hit. Uh, no, not, not Mogur, Hakon. Damn dude. Uh, when hit by an adjacent enemy, counter attack for one armor damage. Yeah, let's move over here at the very least. Let's do bring the pain. Take down some of that armor. Oh, that's Bursi. Oh yeah, that's right. Hakon is uh, on the other side. Okay, Bursi. You have the uh, heavy impact. How much damage do you do? Only one? Ah oh, yeah, of course, with the five hit points. Um... You can only do one break damage. The Tempest doesn't make sense here because I'm gonna hit uh, one of my allies. Let's uh, do some extra break damage here can we do this wherever we want we cannot okay so we do need to move Let's move over here. Oh, we cannot do slag and burn there. Ah, that's a pity. <clears throat> and we can also not attack from there. Oh man, that sucks. Okay, that's wasted. Right, Ludin. I'm hoping you can kill this dude. At the very least. So that does two damage. Yeah, we can actually kill him if we use both willpower points. Alright, that's one down at least. Um, Eric, Eric, okay, Eric, why don't you give Rally to Ursa? think she can use that. Okay, that is not too bad. Let's try and do as much damage as possible. We can do six. That is one down. So, how much damage can we do here? That is five damage. We still need three hits then. Yikes. That was not at all what I wanted to see. 
let's move you over here and let's now do the slag and burn there okay that is good but now she's down yep <laughs> oh boy um, you should be able to kill this guy Uh, let's see what are we gonna do we can do oh we can do three damage to that guy yeah we are gonna do three damage to that guy five even let's just go all out we need to put him down that does an extra damage This is a uh, tough one. Let's save that for now. Um, Ludin, you cannot reach over there. What does Mogur do again? Yeah, we actually, we really need to kill this big dude. That's a pity that I have to do it with Mogur. Uh, Luden, Eric. Yeah, it's too dangerous not to do it actually. It's too dangerous not to do it. Okay, let's move up there. It's a pity you cannot throw the axe at uh, the spear. There goes Eric. Oh, that's quite all right, actually. That is not too bad at all. Uh, he can do only one damage. Actually, you can do three damage. Or he can take uh, some armor off this guy. Okay, so... Can we do this impact thing now? I would certainly hope so. If we move over here... Five damage... If I do that, what happens? Let's see, three damage down here. Let's do four damage down here. Okay, that's actually still okay. Let's move over here. Let's impale this guy. Eric, you can kill that dude. Let's move you there. And then 
attack for one. All right. Okay, so we should be good now. This is, um, let's see, one damage or two damage. Let's hit the... Uh, oh, maybe we can do some extra armor damage here. <coughs> we can kill him. We can kill this guy or we... Yeah, I think we need to do six damage over here. Maybe even seven. And then Luden can kill this guy. Luden actually uh, did a good job. And uh, Eric, to be fair, took a lot of damage. Let's do one more armor thingy here and then just kill him. You take a moment to survey the battlefield. The enemy is being pushed back all the way down the line. You could take this opportunity to pull back and leave combat immediately. On the other hand, chasing down more dredge would rally your fighters and save a few lives. You won't have time to rest or change your party, but a chance to loot your enemies might even reveal items they took from previous victims. Um, let's kill a few more as they flee. You attack any dredge still brave enough to face you. Oh, so that is with the same party even. Wow. That's three of them though. Um... Let's move you over here. Let's stay here. Luden. Let's move Luden back here. Um, I want to give... Oh, I don't have enough willpower. I see. Uh, in that case... I might move over there. And then let's put Hakon over here. Oof, that does way too much damage. This is gonna be... Okay, let's break some armor that does more than a, uh, than one at the very least. Let's move Luden over there. That is somehow still fine. However, Hakon is in quite a pickle. That is only one damage. Yeah, it's only one damage on any of them. Let's move Eric over. Attack this guy. Might be biting off more than I can chew, to be honest. Uh, he does not have anything left. He only has two hit points. Um, he 
he does two armor break. Or we could... No, we cannot even move there. Yeah, we're gonna need to do it this way. He is uh, probably going down. Nope, he's going down too. Let's see, if I move over here, I'm gonna get hit by everyone probably. And it's not like I have a lot left. Let's take down some more armor. Yep, he goes down. Oh man, I am so dead. I can do seven. Nine, even. Man, it's three against one. Yikes. Um, okay, let's move over here. Can do seven to this guy. That is something. Let's hope he doesn't hit too hard. Uh, what does the impale do again? Let's see. Kill, grant self and adjacent allies one willpower. Causes knockback and target to bleed. Okay, knockback. So if I move over here and I impale that guy. Did that do enough is the question. Yikes. So now I'm doing two damage again. Only two damage. I need to take them down as much as possible. Alright, I don't have anything left anymore now. This is not gonna matter very much. Yeah, it was deflected and we lost. Damn. <clears throat> And now we have a party of wounded people. You black out as you fall and come to again amongst the warriors who were able to escape the battle. They carried you from the scene. You've lost a lot of good warriors. Not much left to do but push on. Okay, after this um, stellar defeat, <laughs> I'm going to end the episode right here. Thanks a lot for watching. If you're enjoying the content, by all means, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in a next episode.